RH Restoration Hardware, a super high-end furniture company, just reported a disaster of a quarter. I want to take you guys through. We're going to look at the numbers here, look at the outlook, look at the guidance. Uh, then I want to actually not just look at that. I want to look at what analysts were expecting versus what this company reported. And then we're going to react to the RH segment on Fast Money here. I had to pull it up on Fubo. I couldn't find it on YouTube. So uh, pulled it up on Fubo there, and we'll, we'll get into that. Three reasons why I'm covering this in this video, okay? First reason is just around like educational purposes. So maybe if there's any like, let's say newer investors in your first year or two, just kind of how I look at an earnings report here, okay? Second reason is, and I think this is the most important reason, is a company like RH is gonna tell you how rich people are feeling. That's the bottom line. This is a company that sells to the wealthy, specifically the top 10% of income earners, top 10% of the wealthy. And ultimately, when RH is doing very well, that means usually the, the wealthy are out there spending, they're feeling confident. Um, when their numbers are really bad, that means they're definitely not feeling so confident about the state of things, okay? And the third reason I'm gonna cover this is because RH is a stock I do wanna own. Uh, it's not a stock I currently own, but I would bet I'm gonna change that pretty soon, okay? And this is a stock I actually wanna build a position and I like the company a lot for the long term, but there's no doubt they're going through a very bad time, short term, and it's likely gonna continue on at least in the short term here, okay? So hope you guys get a lot of value out of today's video. I appreciate everybody joining me. As always, 25,000 plus subscribers now on this channel. I appreciate each and every one of you for being here as always. If you're looking to apply to join my private stock group, the private wealth group, send you one of these in the mail. Um, check us out. That'll be the uh, description area down there. It might also be pinned comment, okay? Now, before we get into their numbers, I just wanna show you this because I think this is important, okay? This is just one community in Vegas. Look at how many homes are, are for sale in that community uh, this is like a luxury community right and just look at how many homes are for sale i mean it's a it's an immense amount there's definitely a lot of homes and there's a lot of people that aren't actually selling right now either because they know it's so hard to sell right now so that's another interesting dynamic then that once again that's just one community there right and you've seen a lot of this where people are you know have their homes lifted at whatever price and they're just sitting on the market for a long period of time and they're not being realistic around pricing right now they you know these, these luxury homes they've got to bring down price they're so unrealistic and they just sit there and collect dust right now and unless you got a premier premier most super modern perfection type thing you still need to bring down price this came out recently luxury home sales plunged 45 percent with Miami and the Hamptons hit the hardest. Sales of luxury homes dropped 45% during the three months end of January 31st, compared with the same period a year ago. Yeah, folks, um, that, that's what's going on in the luxury home market, okay? So in regards to RH, what's happening here? Check this out. So fiscal year gap net revenues, uh, almost 3.6 billion versus 3.75 the previous year. So not a disaster, not a disaster, right? Gross margins, 50.5 versus 49.4 last year. That's actually really good to see, right? Gap operating margins, 20.1% versus 24.7%. So that's the little troubling, huge declining operating margin there. Net income, 550, uh, 529 million versus 689. That's worrisome. But if you're going to have an operating margin go down that much, your net income is likely going to fall that much, you know, to a uh, pretty quite to, to a very similar extent. Let's just call it that. Okay. Gap diluted earnings per share, 1990 versus 2213 there. Okay. Now the worst part is the business is t deteriorating faster now. Okay. So if you look at their latest quarter, as far as percentages, they're all getting far worse than what the year over year numbers were for the full year fiscal year. Okay. If you look at the fourth quarter of 2022, net revenues came in at 772 versus 903 the same time last year. Geb gross margins came in at 47.8 versus 50.5. Operating margins came in at 14.5% versus 24.1% at this time last year. Net income came in at 107 million versus 147 million. Uh, what is that? Uh, you know, 30, 40% decline, something like that. EPS, 421 versus uh, 491 was expected there. And then on adjusted basis, 288 versus 566, okay? So what this means is not only is our business deteriorating, but it's deteriorating much more recently than it was, let's say, several quarters ago, okay? So it's very, very troublesome. Now, they, they talk, obviously, about the, the business, what they got going on, and that's great, right? And if you're really into RH, then definitely, you know, check that out. But two components I want to draw your guys' attention to because I think these are important. Cash generation. We have demonstrated that, quote, those with capital in difficult markets are the ones who capitalize. That's why we raised $2.5 billion of long-term debt before the markets tightened and are now in a position to take advantage of opportunities that may present themselves 
in times of uncertainty and dislocation. Times like these also require us to have a discipline to say no to things that are nice to have in order uh, to focus on our resources, what's most important, right? That includes making the difficult decision to graciously say goodbye to team members whose roles are no longer essential in our new view of the future, enabling us to work with a more integrated and collaborative fashion on fewer, more important priorities. Basically, they're letting go of 440 people, which is actually a pretty big number for a company like RH. It's actually a pretty significant cut there. And we expect to achieve cost savings of approximately $50 million annually, inclusive of associated benefits and other cost savings. Okay, so this is a good example of a company that's outside of the tech industry that's cutting employees, right? And this is what you're starting to see from overall corporate America, especially in this most recent quarters. A lot of these companies that aren't just tech companies are starting to let go of employees, okay? Now, the most important thing I thought was this outlook. This is a straight-up disaster, folks, okay? This is awful, awful. Let me show you what's going on here, okay? Based on our current trends, we expect fiscal 2023 revenues to be in the range of 2.9 to 3.1 billion, okay? Here's a deal. Analysts had them doing 3.46 billion dollars, okay? 3.46, their guidance, so their, their low-end guidance is a half a billion dollars, 500 million dollars less, if we want to take their midpoint, which is always the best thing to do, you want to take the midpoint between their low and their high, okay? So 293.1, so that means $3 million. So that's basically projecting that they're going to have more than $400 million less than what analysts were expecting this company to have for this coming fiscal year. That's a disaster, folks, okay? Straight up disaster. And adjust to operating margin in the range of 15 to 17%, which includes an approximate 150 basis point drag due to the ramp of our global expansion. We estimate that the 53rd week will result in revenues of approximately $60 million, okay, for basically an extra week in this fiscal year. For the first quarter fiscal year 2023, we are forecasting revenues of $720 million to $735 million. Oh my gosh, okay. Analysts were expecting $833 million. That means RH is expected to have revenues in this coming quarter $100 million less than what analysts were expecting, which means we're, we're well over, well over uh, a 20, what, 20, 25% decline plus. I mean, that's a disaster, folks, okay? Absolutely awful. And adjusted operating margins of 13 to 14%, which is troubling as well. So horrible operating margins, horrible revenues, a uh, horrible guide for the overall year, horrible guide for the next quarter. Um, I mean, it doesn't get it doesn't get much worse than that, folks. Okay. Now I want to go ahead and react to you know the, their segment here on RH and, and hear different folks' opinions on RH here. But you know, just kind of to finalize my thoughts before we get into this video is that just shows you that the the luxury home buyer is not out there right now, and if they are out there, they're they're few and far between. And that just means wealthier people are just sitting tight right now, okay? They'd rather be in treasuries right now. They'd rather have money in savings accounts and CDs and be positioned in that way rather than real estate right now. And something so important you have to remember is real estate lags the stock market significantly. So let's assume we bottomed the market. And I'm talking about the stock market. Let's assume we bottomed the stock market in October, Okay. And we'll see if that happens. That means real estate isn't going to bottom till likely at least probably fall time of this coming year. But there's also a possibility, especially on the high end, but there's also a possibility that we, we don't bottom real estate until 2024. My assumption is we're going to bottom real estate at some point in time this year. That's my, that's my opinion, okay? But it's also a possibility, if the economy was to deteriorate quite, quite a bit more, that we don't bottom until 2024, or worst case scenario, 2025, okay? So this is just something to keep in the back of your mind, is real estate takes a while to bottom. And this is why you saw the stock market bottom in 2009. You did not see the real estate bottom until 2011, folks, okay? So just understand, there can be a year, there sometimes can be a two-year plus lag, between when the stock market starts moving up and when real estate actually starts moving up again, okay? So just something to kind of keep in mind in regards to all that, okay? Let's go ahead and react to what they're talking about on Fast Money here. Um, the, the names that you would extrapolate to. 5% down, in fact, in 2021. 
nearly 3 million Navaj users. Earnings alert on RH, the furniture retailer dropping after hours on weak guidance and a top and bottom line miss. Uh-oh, RH, Steve Kovac listening in on the conference call. What's the latest, Steve? Yeah, so not only did RH Tyler miss on the bottom and uh, top bot lines, it also gave weak full year guidance with the CEO Gary Friedman warning of an uncertain housing market in the coming months. But new factors are also to blame, like the recent banking crisis. And he also says as the Fed continues to raise rates, luxury home sales in particular are down, 45% down, in fact, in 2021, according to Friedman. Now, analysts wanted to see nearly $3.5 billion. From 2021, not in 2021. Luxury sales are phenomenal in 2021. I can tell you that much. That was a great year. Um, it's from 2021. New for the full year guidance, but RH only guiding up to $3.1 billion. Meanwhile, Friedman also saying RH's full year 2022 sales were down from the peak pandemic in 2021. And now here's the money quote from his letter to shareholders. Quote, data points to business in our sector getting worse before it gets better. Now for some good news for Two other super important points. There was a lot of important points in that conference call, okay? One was he made a point that, did we sell any stock when the stock was $700? And he's like, no, we didn't, because I believe this stock's gonna be worth a whole lot more than $700 in the future if you take a longer term view of this, okay? And the other point he also brought out on the conference call was he said, and this was his quote, that this is the worst luxury home market he's ever seen. And he's been the RH CEO since, uh, if I recall, 2001, I want to say. So do keep that in mind. He, you know, to say that is basically saying he thinks the luxury home market right now is worse than it was in 08, 09, um, 2010, which is pretty shocking to hear. He says the company took on two and a half billion dollars in debt when interest rates were low, plus cutting a lot of costs like laying off 440 employees. Now, Tyler, the call's just getting started. I'll be back with any updates, but we see shares down about 4% right now. All right, Steve, thank you very you got much. It. Courtney, you confided to me that you're moving into a new house soon. Oh, I am. By the way, if you're wondering, why is that stock not down even more, right? Uh, I mean, there could be many various things. One is maybe people feel housing's bottoming this year. So, you know, you got to position six to nine months ahead of that, right? Another component is Warren Buffett, okay? If you didn't know, if you didn't know, if this is breaking news to you, uh, Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway, they own over 10% of this company when I last looked, okay? Over 10%. So many times in, in Buffett-related stocks, they have what I like to call the Buffett floor under them, essentially, which is, uh, you know, they only get sold off so far because the, the view is, oh, Buffett's going to step in and buy a bunch more of these shares if, if uh, you know, the stock falls too much. So does, does he or, or Todd or Ted, whoever was buying the stock, step in? Maybe there's a possibility, um, but I thought that was intriguing. Yes. The houses are hard to find right yes, now. Yes, they are. Right? If housing slows, can this, com can this company make progress? M maybe in New York City that's the situation. I can tell you it's not I – mean, there's countless cities in, in the United States of America. It's not hard to find a house right now, okay? I can tell you that. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe she's talking about New York City. That's a whole different dynamic there in New York. But I can tell you pff, anything on the, on the, on the, the West Coast – anything um you know in the south right now like like it's begun it's a lot easier to find a property uh, than it was let's say a year ago 18 months ago you're gonna go shop there you get out there and get a bell bar age yeah this is the tough thing i've actually been very optimistic on housing because even though there is um a problem with housing now that mortgage rates have risen there is a huge demand out there it is mainly millennials people who are starting families and trying to buy houses but there's not enough to go around what's happening is affordability is a problem now because rates are higher and prices have not come down yet so what's happening is people are either having to move down their budgets or use more of their budget to buy a house, those who are still able to. And so I think it's less people who are going to um, house. So they have less, less cash less left, left over house. after the housing exactly. transaction to go to, to RH. Yeah, right. and I, I would maybe extrapolate a little bit to Home Depot if we look at the guidance that they gave just a few weeks ago. And you think about just how that stock has acted. You look at consensus estimates. I'm looking at like down 5% in earnings this year and about flat sales. And it's trading at a market multiple. Multiple. I, I see like this thing could could rally or actually decline back towards those lows that we saw in the fall. That's another 10% or so. And again, 
that's going to be if we start to see declines of some of the peers or some of the, um, the the names that you would extrapolate to, you know, this is an off cycle name and you could see estimates coming down and you could see the stock coming down with it. So to me, RH is not that interesting to me. Um, I would kind of extrapolate a little bit more to Home Depot and Lowe's and we already heard from both of them and it wasn't great. Well, we didn't build a segment around RH. He's not interested. No, I'm not. They're putting a great <laughs> restoration hardware in Madison, New Jersey. I'm just yeah. letting you folks know. Is I'm all right? You just like going there and sit on the couches all day? <laughs> you know I mean, you walk in, there's guy. Just take a guy. Funny you should say yeah. that. But it doesn't mean you should buy the stock you, on the back. You go, of you go there and you do find a lot of husbands oh, sitting yeah. on the couches. I, 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 who uh, hasn't been there? Who hasn't been there? But here's, here's the way I look at it. So inventories seem to be in line. Inventories are up 9.2% year over year. Unfortunately, that's against negative 14 and a half percent sales growth year over year. So they have an inventory problem manifesting itself in margins, which was 16 and a half percent. They were 25 percent the same quarter last year. And they're really guiding significantly lower for the year. So although on a multiple basis, you look at it, just that snapshot, it looks cheap. Question is, is it going to get cheaper from, or is it going to get more expensive from? Well, here, it's getting it's though. getting more expensive, yeah. and and actually, I think it, it played itself certainly a month ago. I mean, look, the stock's down forty percent going into these numbers, so it, it traded up to eighteen and a half times. It's probably you know seventeen and a half, sixteen times at this point. Um, I I think the margin issues are very important because this is a company that said they were going to defend the margin, they said they're going to defend the price points. I think it's simpler than that. I think if you go back to where the market is trading on this, at one point at its peak when people were very nervous about where we went. This, the short interest on the stock was somewhere around 16, 17%. It's come all the way into eight, which is the low of where we were. I think this is uh, a concern. I actually think shorts are going to go after this thing again. Short interest has actually come down, even though the stock has pulled back a lot. I don't think you need to chase it. I have a small position. I hope to get it lower. All right. There's a lot more fast to come. And here's small position for Tim. Oh, boy. We might own the same stock. That's a rare occurrence. If you don't know Tim, he's a huge hater of Tesla for many, many years. All right. Question is, when do I start a position? Okay. Uh, in our age i can say i will start one really really soon i really really soon okay and the reason being is now they've in my opinion just thrown kitchen sink in terms of uh horrible guidance for not just this coming quarter but for the full year and I, i'm looking at it from a situation where i think they're going to probably beat those numbers they they, they, they lowballed them so much that outside of an extraordinary event where the housing gets destroyed way worse. And I'm talking about luxury housing specifically because that's what affects uh, obviously RH the most, right? Outside of a scenario like that, um, I think likely we're, we're bottoming luxury homes at some point this year. I don't want to predict if it's 2Q, 3Q, or 4Q, but I'm very confident at some point this year luxury homes will bottom. We're going to start an uptrend from there. That's going to be bullish for RH. And when you just threw kitchen sink at the you know the quarter, horrible, horrible guide for the year, horrible guide for next quarter, horrible margin guide, everything was across the board. It seems like Gary just wanted to put expectations on the floor and then hopefully you know, surprise to upside. Because it's not a good feeling to come in and miss and miss and miss. You'd rather set expectations on the floor and then come in and just slowly beat them, beat them. You get the, some momentum building with your team, confidence, all those sorts of things. So that's my opinion. I do like the company a lot for the long term, their strategies, everything they're going after. And I, I appreciate it. And I think it's going to be a, a huge winner five years out, 10 years out um, for long term investors. And clearly, uh, obviously, they think that's the same over there at Berkshire. So appreciate everybody joining me as always. Much love. Thanks for being subscribed. If you're looking to apply, join my private stock group, my private wealth group, and uh, you have goals to get to six figures in the market, or maybe even, uh, let's say, seven figures plus. Check us out in there. Appreciate everybody. Much love as always, and have a great day.